Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury Three with another exhibition match. This time, Orpheus versus Ivan D. We saw Ivan D last game do a really nice defensive comeback on a shield mirror on Desert Cliffs, but now we're on Titan Duel, which is a vehicle and tank focused map. Although hovercrafts were used quite a bit recently, but it is vehicle and tank focused primarily. Granted, hovercrafts are a vehicle type, so yeah, vehicle, hover, tank—that's what's used here. See what they go for and how it plays out. We have also, I've also seen Orphelius, but that was a while ago. I'm not sure exactly what's changed in his play, but his elo has gone, or their elo has gone up, so I'm imagining that they have improved. Anyway, Orphelius going for Light Vehicle Factory, which is not surprising, especially given the fact that Light Vehicle was buffed a bit from the last tournament. So if you guys saw the last tournament, Hovercraft was used all the time. Well, Light Vehicle had a bunch of buffs so that Light Vehicle would be used. And Ivan D also going for Light Vehicle, so both players going for Light Vehicle. Pure Mirror, and that is what is expected now. I mean,. It was kind of interesting to see hovercrafts, which hopefully we will see more more as well alongside light vehicles. But frankly, it was kind of it was a little much. Wait, embargo. Wait, was there a gentleman's agreement not to have hovercrafts be used at all? Hmm, I have to ask them about this game. They aren't actually watching it. And yeah, this is actually after the recent light vehicle. If this was this game, oh shoot, let's see. Yeah, this game is on version 1.2.8.1, so it is after the recent vehicle buff. Well after it, actually. That was from about yesterday. Anyway, Orphelius is, well, able to defend off the first scout. And scouting themselves, they go in with impunity, or at least they're able to see some of the periphery of the base. There is a Lotus inside the base, which will block them from getting much further. Ivan Diaz, we saw last game, is very fond of their defenses. Extremely so. But... It seems like they can't work it out. My guess is, is almost that Ivan D might just go for Dominatrix in the late game. That seems like something they do. That sort of... Well, I mean, the last game they won by Eraser Roach. So it seems like Ivan D has a tendency to try to go for basically very rapidly eliminating their opponent's army. Or pot, I mean, turning their opponent's army on them seems kind of to fit to me, but maybe I'm way off base. We'll see, though. Anyway, Orphelius is going for... Scorchers, as is Ivan D. Both players doing the same thing. Ivan D going very heavily for Scorchers. No, well, there's one Mason they already have out. And similarly, Orphelius has the one Mason out. Both players actually went for pretty much Dart into Mason. Very quick scout into Mason, not building the Scorchers until after the Mason was out. Looks like Orphelius, done with production right now, might be a mistake. I think they might not be paying attention to the factory right now, which is unfortunate because at this stage they could actually do infinite build. Or they're very close to the stage where they can do infinite build. And right now they're going to start floating, which is not the best time, due to a lack of caretakers. Anyway, Ivan D on the other hand, getting in a... Getting in a Mason just in the middle of production queue, while Orphelius... Sorry, well, continue to build up. So Ivan D is actually behind economically compared to Orphelius. Orphelius has been expanding fairly aggressively. But Ivan D looking to stop this... Orphelius is slash... Scorched, I mean, we're out of position. They're moving back in to defend. Forcing back one of Ivan D's Scorchers and the other two getting into the main base. Ivan D Scorchers managed to get rid of one Metal Extractor. Oh, that's it. That's all they can do. I was starting a count for nothing. But hey. One Metal Extractor is still a Metal Extractor. That puts Ivan D and Orphelius basically even for economy. While Ivan D continues to move out with more and more Scorchers. Orphelius getting a Mason of their own and... Well, another Mason of their own. So they have two Masons each. Ivan D is actually slightly ahead in the constructor count, though. And they have one Mason assisting the factory, and the other Mason is is expanding. While Orphelius, the one Mason that just came out, is idle for now. Probably going to be used... Probably going to be used to help out, but actually is just purely idle. Okay, there you go. It is going to help out, but Ivan D is ahead. I should point out very slightly, Ivan D has gone slightly ahead. And no, Orphelius is using it to get to deal with their energy deficit, because Orphelius has actually been behind in energy this entire time. While Ivan D... Mansion to get ahead primarily with wind generators. <laughs> it's been working out for now, but as you can see, the range is 0.2 minimum. So Ivan D is going to have a bit of a hard time with that. Now Orphelius getting it. Let's see, Orphelius has five slashers or so, while Ivan D also has five slashers, or actually four slashers. So, kind of micro base, but we are getting the combat in now, and Orphelius does manage to get a quick kill on Ivan D's Scorcher. Keeps the Scorcher for their own. I think I said slashers, actually, of Scorchers, but yeah. And Ketaboard is a good point there with the air switch because that is that is something you kind of expect, but I think the players might be thinking it might be taking too long to do that. 
I mean, that would take about 30 seconds to do, which is a pretty long time in 0k. I mean, it's only been four and a half minutes, and so far, this has happened, so... I think they might be thinking Air Switch would take too long, because that would sacrifice the Scorchers. I mean, basically, it'd be a matter of Ivan D or Ophelius, whoever decides to go for it, would basically have to do it... Ophelius is in the better position, by the way, to do that, due to the greater number of Scorchers. They have to do that while their opponent doesn't realize they're vulnerable, and Ivan D just raiding around the periphery, although they... Not sure if they're aware of it, but they are going for... Oops. No, they are barely aware of it that they're going for where the Scorchers are. The yeah, Ivany was actually really well positioned to harass nicely. And is still going for the harassment. There we go, over to the north. And Orphelius losing one male extractor. Well, second male extractor now. And possibly losing a second. Really come down to when the defenses come in. And a second goes down. The Scorchers on a bit of a suicide mission, but... They managed to get rid of one of Orphelius' Scorchers, lose one of the number, another Scorcher of Orphelius, the Mason not going down, and actually more Scorchers going down. Ivan about to lose the entire group of Scorchers, but at the same time, doing nice micro there, just nicely, nicely pulling Orphelius' units around, and ultimately evening out the Scorcher numbers, while taking out another couple of Metal Extractors. That was not a bad raid, Orphelius is getting a lot of damage done to them, although they are managing to stay on top, they actually Surprisingly, despite the production disadvantage, they haven't been producing as much as Ivan D has been. And even then, Ivan D is actually starting to get too much economy for the production right now, but Orphelius has just not produced at all. And Orphelius getting Commander Dive going on, and that is... That is it! Or, no, not quite! Well, I should say, that is it for the Commander Dive. Almost worked, didn't quite work. Leveler is coming in to attempt to deal with this, but... That is deal with the Scorcher Spam. Possibly deal with the commander outright, although immediately Leveler will take a couple shots to do that. But no, continue to go for raids. Orphelius needs to defend effectively, and if Ivan D actually realizes that this is going on, reads are right, and it looks like Ivan D might actually be calling this. I mean, Orphelius does have the information advantage on account of radar, but still, I think, yeah, Ivan D is calling this and going to the south side. Unfortunately for Ivan D, Orphelius can completely see what's going on, so. This isn't going to work as well as I'm sure Orphelius would, sorry, I'm sure Ivan D would like. But Orphelius instead just going for the attack. Straight for the attack, and Ivan D not going for the counterattack, instead going to defend, moving back to defend, not wanting to risk it, and I think with the leveler in tow, this actually will work out. At the very least, Orphelius will be forced to retreat, and indeed that is what happens. Orphelius gets pushed back, and okay, well we have three minutes on a... Uh, it's less than three minutes, actually. That was a little while ago that Kedwar mentioned that, but yeah. This... Actually, is surprising. Yeah, the air switch is not happening. In fact, there isn't much of a static build-up, either. Orphelius is building a few defenders here and there, but Ivan D, despite what we saw last game, is not building up a whole lot of Lotuses. A few Lotuses here and there, a few defenders here and there, but not all that many. However, Orphelius... In a really nice position, getting rid of a couple of Ivan D's forces, and ultimately raiding out the front line. Destroying everything that's there, and losing a couple Scorchers in the process, but that was actually really nicely timed. Ivan D's forces were split when that attack happened, and Orphelius ultimately gets away with basically only two losses. Which at this stage in the game is fairly small. Especially given the 30 metal being pumped into the factory all at once. And Orphelius, 37-39, okay, a lot of that is reclaim. Great deal of that metal that Ivan D fed to Orphelius, but that's, that's key. That's still important, that's, that's gonna be there for another couple minutes. And there comes the leveler. Now it's doing his job, finally getting into position, which ultimately does force Ophelia, well, Ophelia's briefly back. But they are not letting up. And Ivan D, it's gotta be careful here. Scorchers are not in the best position, but they do get a nice-ish surround. Still needs to reposition, still needs to get the levelers into a position where they can be used, because right now, Ivan D has about eight, Scorchers compared to Orphelius's 16. Orphelius has twice as many Scorchers as Ivan D does. I mean, basically you can take this on head-to-head -head while going off to the side, but for the levelers. But even then, just going off to the sides. Orphelius going for a spread raid, flanking raid, the north side getting in pretty quickly. The south side basically there is a distraction because Ivan D has nothing really in the south. But the north side is going to deal quite a lot of damage and Ivan D coming in to defend, or trying to come in to defend, scrambling their forces. But unfortunately for them, they fell for the distraction. Orphelia is coming with a real force in the north, and that real force is going to take care of all these wind generators. Everything here is going to go down. Wind generators, metal extractors, two metal extractors, and two lines of metal of wind generators so far. Looks like a third metal extractor coming in very shortly. 
I am indeed about to lose everything. Their production actually it looks like just going straight for the factory, not even bothering with anything else anymore. Just gonna go full on factory, and that is going to pay off too. That factory going down, and I am indeed without any production, going for the counterattack. But unfortunately, that counterattack does not pan out. Unfortunately, I missed it as well. But yeah, that factory's down. Gunship factory on top of that though. I've indeed trying to go for the gunships, which would, they did get out, but still. And okay, there you go. There it is. <laughs> get away, get over half right. Yes, but I've indeed is setting up a tank factory on top of this. But at this point, Ophelius has managed to take advantage of the economic advantage into a production advantage, into a military advantage. And at this point, they're just going to be pumping out tons of units. And basically, the only hope is that this brawler is able to take out everything. Given that it is a crowd control unit, it probably will be able to, but it's going to come down to whether or not the Scorchers can hit it in the air. Or whether the Scorchers even care. I mean, they might just go past it and tear apart the remainder of Ivan D's entire setup. Like, Ivan D might just lose everything to these Scorchers. In fact, Ivan D right now does have radar coverage, in fact, does have line of sight coverage, knows these Scorchers are here, getting the Brawler into position. But at this point, Ivan D is losing yet another metal extractor, and I think the Scorchers are just going to ignore the Brawler completely, tear apart what they can, go for a suicide mission, and maybe even kill another factory outright. Going for the Lotuses, at least. Getting rid of those, and getting rid of the metal extractors on top of that. Yep, everything going down once again. Looks like we're going to get a repeat of a couple minutes ago, and that factory about to go down once again. Actually, the, nope, the factory is the target on second attempt, but this will not be as successful. The Brawler can't be quite so easily ignored, and does ultimately save Ivan D's base. And actually, at this point, Orphelius did get a leveler in the back of their base, losing quite a lot on top of that. Getting something to build storage as well, but yeah, this leveler able to deal some damage. Get rid of Metal Extractor, deal some damage to production, get rid of a few caretakers. I mean, that's going to buy Ivan D precious time. And now, of course, there is a brawler on the loose, too. Just hovering over in the southwest side of the map, but it is going to be fairly useful very shortly. And Orphelius has decided to ditch the Raider game finally. Actually, not completely ditch it, but has decided to primarily switch over to Ravager and going for the Commander. Round two on the Commander, but it has healed up, has upgraded. No effective anti air up here, though. All the defenders are slightly out of range, and Orphelius' Commander at half health, while well, at the same time the Ravagers and Scorchers are raiding forward. But Orphelius' Commander about to go down, and that Brawler is not going to be. Phased at all by the defenders. Down goes the commander. Orphelius losing the commander, and with that, a lot of their economy. Normally, I'd say this stage of the game doesn't matter, but because of those earlier raids, Orphelius' economy was actually about a quarter dependent on the commander, which is fairly large. And actually, no, a third, I think, possibly dependent on the commander. Given the current economy, yeah, a third is not unreasonable. So Orphelius' economy falling behind, and Ivan D looks like they're going to come back despite the very. Very powerful presence from Orphelius. I mean, that raid there, that flank raid was great. But unfortunately, despite its, despite it working so effectively, Orphelius did not manage to either expand based on that and get enough production on top of that, or didn't accurately predict the fact that there would be a second factory in the switch on top of that. But even with that, it's just the fact that they just sacrificed all their Scorchers. I can kind of see why they went in for the raid, but that was a suicide attack, which, I don't know, it, it was a close call for how well it panned out, but even if it didn't, even it did pan out. I mean, that brawler, that brawler was up already. So yeah, and on top of that, the level of raid that Orphelius is not paying attention to, which could have been stopped by the brawl. Yeah, the brawler could have stopped that, no problem. But unfortunately, was out of position. Sorry, not the brawler. What am I saying? The brawler was on the same side, which Orphelius could have stopped with Ravagers earlier on. But yeah, Orphelius rather focused on the raider game. Like, small mistakes like that, which do appear to be costing them the game. Though, there is Reclaim, there is some hope for Ophelius, but I have indeed basically building up, getting Brawlers, getting Welders, trying to just rebuild, and, I mean, at this point, there's five Brawlers in play. Well, okay, more like three, given that one of them is... Actually, two of them are near-fatally wounded. In fact, both of the near-fatally wounded ones are in this group, I believe. Nope, just one of them. The other one's just in production, but yeah. That, four Brawlers, and there's, I don't know, a couple Crashers? Yeah, there are exactly two Crashers. That's not going to be effective. Orphelius has about three minutes left in the game. Going to go for another raid, though. One last hurrah with these Scorchers. Try their best, but I don't think it's going to work out too well. And Ivan D does retreat. Does not want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Crashers, which isn't unwise. Don't want to donate more metal than you have to, but... At the same time, is getting the Kodachis, is getting the Brawler. I mean, everything's just being built up, and... 
Honestly, Ivan D has the economic advantage, has the military advantage, has the commander still alive, actually, which has been very useful for production. Just making sure, even if the characters go down, that commander's still been there for extra production. It's been very useful. And now, another raid. Orphelia's going for one last hurrah, and that is going to do something. It's going to do some damage, but even then, not very much. There's so much reclaim available, it's not going to matter, and... Really, that's all that can be said. It's... Really, nothing's going to matter. And why are people pointing out the nuke? What nuke? I... Yeah, okay, anyway. That was distracting, but regardless... Orphelius did not do really any damage. Got rid of an elixir actor, but it, but given that Ivan D has 30 metal and all this reclaim, I mean, how much reclaim do they have? Give me a worker here. All right. They have about 2,000 metal worth of reclaim in a relatively defensible position. Yeah, Ivan D is fine. They could lose all their metal extractors and they still win the game at this point. I mean, that wouldn't help, but they probably could pull it out. So, ultimately, Ivan D has this. That's true, actually. Kedabra pointing out that if the spec was basically spec cheating like that, that would have been... That would have been kick-worthy. Seriously, kick out of the lobby worthy. Bet that... Maybe even beyond that. I don't know. That's never really been discussed, honestly. The, the spectator culture in 0k is very strong, but how much spectators actually should or shouldn't say is not something that really comes up a whole lot. I think it's generally understood you don't spoil the game for the players as they're playing. But yeah, there we go, Orphelia throwing the towel, that is game, and I'll have another one for you guys in just a moment. So let's see. That game will be Google Frog and Lowry. So see how that goes. And just in the meantime, short intermission with music, so stay tuned. <laughs> 